Hello there. How blessed are we to live on or near Kondamuka country? It is such a beautiful part of the world. We can just soak in the beautiful views over the bay and breathe in that fresh air and just marvel at God's incredible masterpiece of nature. Today I give recognition and respect to the Kondamuka people and elders of past generations who have called this place home long before we even arrived. And I support the current elders and traditional owners as they navigate their way through this time of forming unity and close relationships and as they mourn such sorrow business around us. And I pray for our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander teenagers and young Jarjams or children that they will have wisdom and understanding as they find a way forward to keep culture um, in generations to come. My name is Karen and I welcome you to Bayside Salvo's online worship service today. Please join us in singing as we offer up our praises to God. He is an everlasting God. I was thinking of those old ads on TV for the Ever Ready batteries and their claim that nothing outlasts an energizer. Well, really, that's just a drop in the ocean, really, when you consider the power and the strength that God delivers. He doesn't wear down. He doesn't slow down. He truly is ever ready and everlasting. So let's turn our blessings into praise as we lift up his name together.
with a friend during the week for a coffee chat and we were quite shocked when we stopped to work out just how long it had been since we saw each other face to face because normally we would see each other quite regularly every week. And then we both expressed similar feelings of how it felt for us that life's kind of just been put on hold since March. But now it's July and you know we realise life's still going on and we're kind of missing it. And it's just a strange time for us all. And, um, and I know that we all face different experiences um, of that reality. And really the only thing that is in common during this whole season is God. He holds all of us, all of this weirdness in the palm of his hand and um, it reminds me of a Sunday school song, you know, he's got the whole world in his hand. So that means we don't have to go it alone, that we don't have to fret. We can put our trust and our hope in him. He will carry us through. How do I know this? How can I be so sure, you might be asking? Well, I believe the truth of God's word and the Bible reminds us in Lamentations 3:22 that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His great mercies never come to an end. In fact, they're new every morning. So great is his faithfulness. Let's commit ourselves again to him afresh today as we sing our praises and lift up the name of our everlasting God.
Father, accept our offering of praise to you today. We thank you for your great faithfulness, for your everlasting love, for your endless mercies. And we just offer up our praises to you today. May you be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. Just want to give you a quick update on a number of things that are happening around the place. We love the fact that people are engaging with our e-newsletter, so we really encourage you to continue to press on with that. And all this information that I'm going to share about right now is really pretty much summarised in there as well, along with a whole host of other stuff. So dig into that and find out all that information. But I just want to remind you of a few important things that are coming up in this next little while. One of them is next Saturday night. Uh, men's ministry is going to kick off in a new way again after the height of the COVID season right here by having a fire night here on the 18th. So we would love to have as many people as possible come along on that night. All males 12 years and over are really, really welcome to come. Bring your friends, encourage them to come along. It's going to be a very relaxed and social night, but we'd love to have you here. That's the 18th at 7.30. If you can be here for our fire night, we'd love to see you. We're also doing a number of continued activities in trying to grow a focus on prayer. Prayer is such a vital part of our lives. It's our spiritual power cell. And so we've got a special prayer retreat coming up on August the 1st with Major Joe Brown. She's been here before and done a remarkable job with that. We're going to give you some more details on that as quickly as possible. We'd love you to put that in the diary. Uh, there's information about putting that in the diary in the newsletter as a date claimer. Saturday, August the 1st. We'd love you to be part of that here. We've also got some other events coming up in August, which are very exciting. Some real prayer training with the Australian Prayer Network and intercession in particular is going to be a real focus of those training modules. And so there's information about that in the newsletter as well. So if you'd love to get involved in learning more about prayer, the concept of intercession, how we do that together, we're going to be really blessed to have leaders here to share on those topics in August. So get that information together in your newsletter as well and be informed about that because we'd love to have as many people as possible come and be part of that. It's a real expression of the body of Christ because we'll have people coming from other churches and all sorts of other places to come and be part of that time celebrating the power of prayer. For our youth and young people, just a reminder that Equips moved into an online space this year and that's actually now opened for registration online. So there's details again in your newsletter. It's going to actually kick off in August but you can register right now and I believe for the first people to register there's actually the opportunity even of uh, winning a special prize along the way. So if you're ready to do that and ready to be involved, get online and find out about that and register yourself. There's going to be all sorts of ways in which people are going to be connecting with Equip Online this year and we'd really love all our youth and young people to be part of it while we wait to have an event like we've normally associated with Equip in times to come. So get involved with that, our youth and young people. We'd love to see you invested in it. We are continuing on this journey of learning about what the post-COVID space is going to look like in terms of gathering larger and larger groups here. We're just starting to pass some of those next milestones in how that can get rolled out and we're doing lots of consultation both with the Salvation Army, with the government guidelines and now also with our local teams to look at that. Some of the really important parts of what we do together as a church family. Coming together on a Sunday morning for corporate gathering is part of that. And so we're looking at that as a team together and working out a plan for being able to do that in the future as safely, but also, yes, moving towards that place as sensibly as we can and as quickly as we can with all those constraints in place. So we'll keep you updated on that. But we've also got teams meeting together to talk about how our Connect space is going to re-emerge. We've already had our team together talking about how our Kids Club is going to re-emerge because these activities of going into our community and connecting with people are so important to us. Even though some of them can happen on this physical site, they're actually an expression of going into our community with the good news of Jesus and his love and his kingdom. And so whether it's Sunday gatherings, whether it's Connect, whether it's Kids Club, these beautiful ways of doing outreach into our community and going into others' lives with this beautiful message of Jesus is really on our agenda. And so we will be keeping you updated we're trying to form those plans and do it in a sustainable way for all those different groups. So continue to pray for us. Continue to pray that we keep uh, the COVID response really, really at front of mind here so that in fact we steer away from having more and more cases and having to regress 
on the journey as other places now have had to do, but we're really looking forward to getting our plans in place and getting back together in really meaningful ways to grow and to go. So God bless of all of you. Uh, we are delighted to be thinking towards an anticipation of being back together in really meaningful ways. So stay safe, stay strong, stay supported by those around you and we'll see you really, really soon. and I hope you have all had a wonderful school holidays for those who are at school and are looking forward to going back to school tomorrow. Hasn't it gone a bit too fast again these school holidays? I think it has anyway. So has anyone lost a tooth over the school holidays? If you have, remember to keep track and when we come back to church really soon the tooth fairy, the church tooth fairy will pay up. So this morning, I simply wanted to pray over you and pray with you as you go back to school tomorrow and as you go back into the world. And when I was thinking about praying over you this morning, a verse from the scripture came into my head from Deuteronomy. And I thought, how about I teach you the verse? We're going to use some actions as our prayer this morning so that you can remember it, so that you can remember that you're being prayed for. And perhaps the rest of the church can also use it to pray over you this week. So the verse is from Deuteronomy 31, 6, and it goes like this. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 6. How about you try it with me? Let's do it again. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God goes with you. 
He will never leave you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6. Let's do it one more time. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6. So that is my prayer over you this morning. As you go back to school, as you go back to your friends and your teachers, and I pray that if there is anything at all that is making you feel afraid or anxious or uncertain, that you will take hold of that verse. Take it with you tomorrow as you leave your house, whether it's um, finding school challenging, whether it's finding some of your friendships a little bit difficult, whether maybe you have trouble telling the truth or doing the right thing when it's really tempting to not do the right thing. Whatever it is that might be making you feel afraid, take the Lord with you. He is with you and he will never forsake you. So I pray that that will be in your head all week this week as you go back to school. Now if you're looking for an activity to do this morning while church is on, I thought I'd give you a bit of a different activity today and you might not like the sound of it at first, but bear with me. What I would like you to do is to perhaps go and make your bedroom or your toy area nice and clean, ready to go back to school tomorrow. Perhaps you might want to pack your bag and think about all the things that you need to put back in your school bag ready for going back to school for term three. And I know that that would be a really, really great act of service for your parents and your family to make tomorrow morning that little bit easier to get back into the routine. Now, if you um, find cleaning your room a bit of a drag, which I totally understand, what I say to my kids when it feels like a drag is why not make it fun? So why not go and put your music on that you like, perhaps some worship music or other music that you like, and make it fun and dance and clean up and make it fun and maybe even say that verse that we've learned today over and over to help you to learn it and use that as a way to help you memorize it. Whatever it is, make it fun and also ask the Lord to help you to do it with joy because when we're serving with joy and when we know that it's because we want to bring harmony into our family and our mums and dads will be less stressed and everything will run smoothly in the morning, that makes it really really great to be able to do. So ask God to help you to do it joyfully and he will. Now if your room is all very clean and that's already all organized, well maybe you can just go to mum or dad and say, what can I do today to serve you to help the week run a little bit smoother? So mum and dad might have some ideas of something that you might like to do. So take this opportunity to do an act of service for your family today. And for those who are junior soldiers, you'll get a bonus point for that because that's one of the things that um, you get a, a special sticker for in your junior soldier passport. So guys, enjoy your last day of holidays and uh, go and enjoy your act of service with your family. And I pray that you have a great week and your church is praying for you as you go back to school this week. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye. Good morning. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus often slipped away to a quiet place to pray and spend time with the Father. And there are at least 10 of Jesus' prayers recorded in the Gospels. One of the great blessings of being a follower of Jesus today is to know that even right now, he still intercedes for his people before the Father. Whilst we don't know exactly what Jesus says to the Father, we do have examples of many of Jesus' prayers in the scripture. For example, in John 17 and verse 11, Jesus prays that the Father would protect his church. He not only prays for physical protection, but even more he prays for spiritual protection, that the church's faith would stay strong even after Jesus had left them and returned to his Father. And then in verses 17 to 19, Jesus prays for his church to be sanctified, that they would be made holy and that they would reflect the glory of God on earth. In verse 20, Jesus further prays that those who will believe through the message of the disciples would come to know him more and that his church will grow and that many people will come to know him through the faithful ministry of all of his disciples then and now. What an amazing gift to us as believers today. 
to be able to read this prayer and to know that Jesus was and still is going to God directly and personally on our behalf. Please join me as I pray and then let's join together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples so long ago. Father, we thank you today for the gift of Jesus to us and the sacrifice he made that so that we could be reconciled to you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who resides within us and provides assurance and strength and comfort. Help us to encourage each other and to engage with you daily in prayer that we might remain in your presence forever. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless. Have a great day. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. It's quiet, thank you. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Isn't our world in desperate need of healing right now? In oh so many ways. That was actually true even before COVID-19 started to wreak havoc all around the globe. But it's even truer now, isn't it? And we're seeing another reflection of that in our country right now with the circumstances in Victoria and how that's exploding and the need for there to be healing in all these different places and in all these different ways. It goes so far beyond the pandemic. I've been thinking about that word healing this week because it connects so strongly with the message that we're focusing on today. And I was thinking about the really comforting nature even of the word. As we hear the word, we automatically, I think, start to breathe a little bit more deeply, we start to relax a little bit more, we start to recognise that there's incredible power in the concept of healing. And bringing healing into our own lives and into the lives of others is such a beautiful and warm way to be connected. And we are on this journey with Jesus, on his fishing expeditions as we're calling them, to talk about how he just went out into his world to share the good news of the love of God, of his coming kingdom, and the invitation for people to be caught up in that. And at this juncture in the story, we're looking at a little passage from Luke chapter 5 today. You'll also find this story in Mark chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 8. So it's included in a number of the Gospels. But we've got this incredible account of the healing of a man afflicted by leprosy. And in this healing story is incredible power because it reminds us that healing was available then. Healing is available today. Healing comes through the heart and hand of Christ. But healing is also our mandate and our opportunity, not just for ourselves, but to share 
with a world that needs us. So let's explore this story for a few moments today and think about what it means for this man to be healed, for us to be healed, and for the world around us to be healed. And in order to investigate this a little this morning and dig a little bit deeper, we've got to think for a moment about this condition that is leprosy. Now, this could have been various skin afflictions. It's not actually entirely clear what's being referred to in its specifics. But what is clear is that lepers at this time, as had been introduced in the Old Testament in the book of Leviticus, and as had followed through then in the culture of these people, lepers were considered unclean. They were shamed, they were shunned, they were feared, They were sent into all sorts of places away from everyone else because no one could bear to be close to them. It got to the point where it wasn't even that people had to shout out, here they come, the unclean ones, the lepers. The obligation was actually on the lepers to do that as they went about their business wherever it was, many of them living in exile outside of community. But when they came into community for whatever reason, They had to call out all the time, unclean, unclean, unclean. What a dehumanizing effect to have operating in your life where you're actually having to self-proclaim that reality to those around you all the time. But that was the reality of the leper in this day. They were the ultimate outcasts, more so than anyone else. They were infected by a condition that they hadn't chosen. They were rejected by their family and friends and all that knew them. They were avoided by all the other people who didn't know them. And they were really condemned to a very hopeless future. They were the ultimate outcasts of their time. And we can only imagine what it would have been like to be in that circumstance, that far from deep relationship and community and intimacy. And into this story comes Jesus the fisher of men, to bring healing. Jesus heals in a wonderful, miraculous, powerful way, as he's already done in the Gospel of Luke. But this takes us to a new place and a deeper understanding of what that means. Because what we learn along the way here about his healing, the measure of it, the mark of it, and where it takes people is remarkable. And we learn about the possibility for healing in our own life. And we learn certainly about the possibility for healing in the lives of others. So let's dig in for just a few moments this morning. There's three key realities here that I think emerge beautifully out of this short account. Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. First of all, as this man comes, pushing past all the boundaries that should have actually kept him away from Jesus, the man who was considered unclean, who should have been living out on the very verge of community and not close to anyone. He comes before Jesus, boldly pushing past all the obstacles in his way socially to do that. But he also comes in incredible humility, doesn't he? And he falls down before Jesus. And in this moment, we see one of the first beautiful realities of this concept of healing here is that Jesus sees the person and not the problem. Jesus sees the person in front of him and not the problems that afflict him. And it's such an important reality because if Jesus had simply seen the problems that were there, he could have reacted just like so many other people in that community and said, well, I'll have nothing to do with this. I'll become unclean. I'll be associated with one who is shunned, shamed and out there on the edges of society. But Jesus sees the person here, the man who is vulnerable, the man who is afflicted, and he reaches out. Seeing the person and not the problem is the first marker of healing in this story. It's being able to see with those eyes, see the image of God in this man. No matter how disfigured he might have been by his condition, Jesus looks past and sees the person. And it's so relevant to even our own time as we think about the reality and the need for healing in the world. Because all around us, people can feel like, and we can feel like, people don't see me, people only see 
the problems. And when I think about the world in which we live today and I think about the outcasts of our society and our world, I think about some of these realities. We think about the addicted and we notice how easy it is for people to see their problems and not see those people. We think about the afflicted and that might be in a mental health perspective, that might be in a physical health perspective, that might be the very affliction of knowing that they are different in this world, that they come from a different culture, that they have belonged in a different place, that they don't fit so naturally with some of the social mores of our society. The addicted, the afflicted, and yes, that whole question of those who are simply different for whatever reason. People who might struggle to fit in because their expression of sexuality or their understanding of gender is challenging for them and then for others. And people can see these things as problems rather than seeing the people that lie behind them. People made in the image of God, people loved and cherished by him. God wants us to see the person and not the problem because that's what he does with all of us too. As I've spoken about that for a moment this morning, you might be thinking about it for yourself and saying, well, I could easily be seen as the addicted or the afflicted or the different. And if that's how you're feeling this message this morning, it may be that God needs to speak to your heart today and say, I see you. And I see you not as a problem, but as a person, a person of infinite value and worth, a person for whom I came to give it all. Seeing the person and not the problem is the first marker of healing here. So can we do the same? In the same way that Jesus does that in this story, can we do the same in the world in which we live? Just do a quick inventory on this matter. Is there someone in your life, even now or in the past, where you just say, I have actually made every effort to avoid, step around, not get involved with that person, almost treated them like a leper because I just see the problems and not the person. Maybe you've done that to another. Maybe you've experienced that for yourself. Either way, God wants you to know the healing comes in seeing the person and not the problem. God sees all of us as his precious children, not as his problems to be solved. Receive that for yourself and be ready to offer it to others. Be ready to move away from that place of shunning or shaming or setting aside and inviting people in because that is a process to healing. And then this process of healing goes on. Having seen the person and not the problem, then Jesus speaks a word which comes after the beautiful activity of reaching out to touch this man, to touch the need in his life. Remember that this man has been living out on the very fringes and periphery of society. No one touches him. No one goes near him. Jesus knows his condition. It's very clear that he knows what's up with this man and yet he reaches out and touches him. He touches the need right in front of him. This is the next great step in the healing because having seen the person and not the problem, Jesus reaches out to touch the need. Not simply to say, I feel and sense a pity for you and your circumstances. That's not enough. Jesus actually reaches out to touch the need, to show solidarity, to move with compassion. Compassion is that movement into action where not only is our heart moved, but our whole self is moved to a place of response. And that's what happens here. Jesus reaches out to touch the need right in front of him. And in so doing, he breaks down every barrier that exists in their society. You can only imagine what those who were watching thought at this moment. How can he do that? Suddenly he now is as unclean as this man. Suddenly now he is putting himself into the same place of being rejected, shunned, pushed aside. But Jesus reaches out to touch the need, pushing past all the barriers, reaching across all those obstacles because he knows how important it is. Touching the need is vital. Not pity, no, 
but compassion, a movement to action. It results when we are prepared to touch the need. So think again of that experience that I spoke about a little earlier. You know, that person that potentially in your life at some stage now or even in the past you've avoided, God actually says to you in bringing healing to this world, you need to reach out and touch that need. Now, it might be physical touch. You know, that's challenging in a time in which we live now. But to reach out and touch the life of someone else with care, with concern, even with a smile, even with the embrace of friendship, that's touching the need. That's actually reaching out and providing that pathway of healing for that person. It's so vital and so important on the journey that we share those moments together. God brings his healing through touching our lives and then invites us to go and touch the lives of others. So if you need today to receive the touch of healing from Jesus, receive that. Know that he longs to reach out beyond every obstacle and barrier that you've potentially put up in your life and said, I'm not worthy of that. God shouldn't bring that to me. I feel too much shame and too much isolation and too much of a sense of being unworthy. God reaches out across all those barriers and says, I want to touch your need with my love. Receive it for yourself and then think about how you can activate that in the lives of others. That's the second great step in this journey of healing here. And then it goes on to give us another beautiful reminder because Jesus actually speaks the words of healing. And it's actually in the speaking of those words of healing, if you look at this story closely, that's where the healing happens. Jesus has already identified. Jesus has already reached out and touched this man. But it's at that moment that he speaks the words of healing that the healing begins to flow. That's when it happens. The healing happens in that moment. And did you notice the phrase that Jesus used there? It's so powerful when we think about what it means for people to be healed, for ourselves to be healed. The man came to him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can do this. And what does Jesus say? I am willing. That's the words of affirmation, of love, of concern, of compassion that take this to a whole different place. Suddenly the healing is possible because Jesus has said, I am willing. That's how I care for you. That's how I long to restore you. And that's so much a characteristic of our relationships in life, isn't it? Both our relationship to the Father in heaven, but our relationships to each other. The power of those words of affirmation, of healing that come, where we say, I am willing to identify with you, to walk with you, to journey with you, to go on this embarking reality of life together. That's what Jesus is communicating here. And that is bringing the instantaneous healing, the miraculous and powerful healing into this story. So what words of healing do you need to hear today? Do you need to hear the voice of God saying to you, my child, I am willing to heal you. If you do receive that right now, that's what God has for you, a heart that is open to you and warm to you receiving his healing today. There are no obstacles, no barriers that he won't push past to reach out and touch you and speak those words of affirmation, I am willing. But in the same way, is it necessary for you to find a place to be able to share those words of healing with someone else? to share with them, to communicate with them this idea that you are willing to walk with them, to journey along, to be part of their process of healing, that you see them, that you embrace them, at least philosophically and at least metaphorically, even in this season, and then say, and I am willing to walk with you. That's the power of healing here. These three things together bring this incredible healing to this man's life and he is forever changed. He's told to go and see the priest 
and confirm this reality that he can be adopted back into society. That's what that moment is all about. That as he goes to the priest and the priest checks him over and says, you're fine. Suddenly he is no longer the outcast. Suddenly he is included. Suddenly he is accepted. He is healed. That's God's heart for him. That's God's heart for all of us and for all those we journey with. So don't miss this opportunity this morning to think about what that healing means to you or to another. God wants to bring healing. He longs to bring healing. It's part of the way he fishes in this world is to bring healing to the lives of ourselves and also of others. And it comes through these three beautiful mechanisms that we might see the person and not the problem, the person we are accepted by God, the person who others are accepted by him, that we will reach out and touch them just as Jesus reaches out and longs to touch you and touch your life with his compassion and his heart of love. Can you do the same? And then speaking those words, as Jesus spoke those words of healing over this man's life, he was forever changed. Jesus longs to speak those words of healing over you and he longs for us to be the words of healing for another. This is how this all comes together and it's wrapped up supremely in the love of God. The love of God that releases healing to all his children and is ready to do so and sees no obstacle that is greater than his power to overcome and bring healing. There is nothing in our lives or in the lives of another, no matter how addicted, afflicted or different we might feel, none of those things can separate us from this pursuing and healing love of God. We're going to sing this morning what I consider to be a really beautiful and poignant song about that reality. And it's actually expressed through the metaphor of Jesus and God laying hands upon us, that healing is in the hands of God, that he longs to pour it out onto us and onto everyone else. We can receive it for ourselves today. We can be part of sharing it with others today. Both of those things are real and vital. And we're reminded through the lyrics of this song and through even this story that we've shared this morning that there is no mountain There is no valley, there is no gain or loss we know that can keep us from the love of God, the healing love of God. More than that, there's no sickness, there's no secret, there's no chain that can keep us from the love of God because it is so deep and so wide and so high and so strong and it longs to bring healing to our lives and to the lives of others. Healing is in his hands, in the hands of the healer. It's in this story. It's available to us. We need to be part of making it available to others. So today, receive the healing of the Father for you in your circumstance or think further beyond that to how you can be part of sharing that healing in the world because that is our fishing task. We are sharing this healing message of God with the world, the healing power of his love that overcomes every obstacle, that reaches out, seeing persons, not problems, seeing the real people and their circumstances, reaching out to touch them by any means possible, breaking through all those barriers to say, I will walk with you, and then speaking the words that I am willing to follow this through. That's where the love of God takes us. So be healed today as we sing this song. You might even want to raise your hands and say, I'm receiving the healing of God. His hands open to me, myself open to him. His healing can course through my body and through my experience and flow out into others. God bless us all to be healed by the wonderful power of God from all of these realities because his healing that was real for the leper in this story is the healing that's available to us today. Let's sing, praise, worship, intercede and receive the blessing of God's healing on our lives right now today.
I pray that you've been blessed by God during our time together today. Let's conclude with a song that glorifies God and lifts up his wonderful name. Sing with us, beautiful one. Some words to live by for the week ahead, taken from Isaiah 41, verse 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Amen. Have a good week. (laughs) 